Hey YouTube, Matt from Adventure Sport Flashlights. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about programming your own flashlight drivers. And this is something a lot of people are interested in doing. And it's really not super hard if you're willing to put the time in to uh, learn a couple of things. I don't have any kind of former formal education for programming or writing code or anything. I just learned this off the internet, so it's, uh, it's not rocket science. It just takes some time. Um, if you want to program your own drivers, uh, the first thing you're going to need is a programmer box. Uh, the one I have is uh, AVR ISP MKII or MK2. And uh, you got to have one of these clips to interface the microchip. Um, SOIC clip. Uh, there's a couple of different kinds I've seen. And this one here, you can see there's kind of slits through it. It's supposed to kind of fit down over the chip. And then this one's got a solid back on it. And I really suggest that if you find this one uh, to go with this because these, you know, they look neat, but they're, they're really not that good. I had a lot of trouble getting them to sit on the micro correctly and actually interface it. And this one doesn't do it perfectly every time, but it does it a hundred times better. And I'll try to put links in the comments so that you can find this stuff. You will have to uh, wire this clip to the box. This is a six, the box has a six pin and the clip is eight so it just means you've got two empty pins and the data sheets for the box and for the microchip you're going to be interfacing, the ATiny 13A, will tell you how those pins are supposed to connect. But once you've got that done, uh, one other thing I suggest, you don't have to do this, but it's I've found it to be really helpful. For some reason, this box cannot natively power the target. So if you don't do this, you'll have to hook a battery up to this. You won't be able to power, you won't be able to flash micros just like this, and you can't flash drivers unless you hook a battery up to the driver. So I thought that was pretty dumb. Um, but I did find this little hack on the internet and I'll try to point this out. From right here you can get USB power to the target and you just wire it up right here to that first pin on the left and then you're taking power from your computer tower and it will give the five volts you need for this and then you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I've seen some people put a diode in there. I just stuck a wire and I've never had any trouble with it or anything. You just, if you don't use a diode though, just make sure you get the, <laughs> the clip on the right way. I have mine marked. This is pin one and there's a little tiny dot on the micro. You gotta make sure that's lined up or you could short it out anyway. Uh, the, the drivers that uh, we're going to be talking about today are really super common, especially this first one. It's called uh, Nang 105C. I guess is what they would say, N-A-N-J-G 105C, and it's a 7135 chip base driver. And there's this is like one of the most common flashlight drivers in the whole world. Uh, Q-Lite driver is this type of driver, and there's a bunch of generic ones. As long as they have a genuine Atmel ATtiny AT 13A micro on it, you can flash them. There's some of them that just have some no-name chip on there, and you won't be able to program those. The other one is the MOSFET driver. This is a custom driver created... Originally by Budget Light Forum member White, it's kind of uh, grown a lot recently, and there's a few versions out there. you got to make this yourself, but it's really a worthwhile driver because you can get a whole lot higher current out of this. This one is limited by how many chips are on here, and this is a linear regulator that it really has no current limit. I've put you know 10 amps over them, no problem, and as long as they're heat synced well, that's fine. So anyway off to uh, programming.